friend is someone that you can really trust. You can trust that they won't hurt you and also that they'll help you out if they can. We get together and we'll say things at exactly the same time in exactly the same tone of voice. It's kind of scary sometimes. A friend to me is someone who knows you inside and out. The advantage of having good friends and spiritually minded is you both are working towards the same purpose. Coming up on Young People Ask, Roadblocks to Friendship. They have their own little groups, and if you're not in that group, then you're not invited either. Young people talk about friendship with God. Well, I definitely think that having a friendship with God is a hard concept to understand. The dangers of making the wrong kind of friends. I got involved in bad association, basically, at school. And then, a modern day drama. Tell me we had a flat tire or something. Oh, yeah. You know what? You're different from the other girls, aren't you? All this coming up on Young People Ask How Can I Make Real Friends? There exists a friend sticking closer than a brother. The Bible said that almost 3,000 years ago. And it's still true today. Everybody needs friends. The problem is making friends is not always easy. Sometimes young people feel that they just don't fit in, even with their Christian brothers. They feel like they're always on the outside, looking in. The road to friendship is not always an easy ride. Young people in four different countries told us of some of the roadblocks they've encountered. The first roadblock, feeling left out. They have their own little groups. And if you're not in that group, then you're not in that group. If you're not a certain age, you don't belong. It's like at amusement parks. If you're not a certain height, you can't get on the ride. That's what a lot of young people do to you. Being ignored can affect us a lot. You can get so sad that you just don't want to open up to anyone. Well, for me, when I came from Bolivia, I got here and I had no friends. I felt so strange. Everybody speaking a different language. Everybody was diff looked different than me. Oh, well, being shy. At times, it can seem lonely because you are too sad to be shy to associate with them, so you rather stay home and just do your own thing. Whether you're young, new in town, or just shy, it hurts to feel left out. But there is a solution to these problems. Following the advice of God's Word, the Bible. It has the best advice on friendship ever written. For example, Philippians 2.4 gives us one of the keys to making friends, taking a personal interest in others. If you show interest in other people, they will do the same for you. If we want to have friends, we first have to be friends ourselves. You have to take the initiative. My mom's always pushing me. Okay, <laughs> I want you to talk to a certain number of people at this meeting. I'm trying to widen out. A good place to widen out is at the Kingdom Hall. Good, how's it going? How's it going? Why not take the initiative and try to meet people? Hey, how are you doing, Will? It's good to see you. Hey, it's good to see you again. I like to arrive at meetings 20 minutes before they begin. In that way, I have the opportunity to speak with more people. Probably the best way to meet people would be 
by going out in service. They put you with a person that you might not actually talk to usually in the kingdom hall, and then you're like, oh man, I'm put with this person, and I wanted to go with this sister or something like that. Eventually, you start talking, and that's how you meet the person. You get to know them better. Feeling left out is just one roadblock to friendship. For some young people, another roadblock may be personality. I think somebody who really um, is out to impress everybody really turns people off because they constantly talk about themselves and um, don't really listen to what everybody else has to say. The whole conversation is on that person. <laughs> You wouldn't like to be with a person that's conceited because all the time they're just talking about themselves. I get the impression that once people get to know me, they no longer want to be my friends because I'm very impulsive. Well, I yell a lot. Sometimes we need to make changes in our personality. As the Bible says, we must continue to be readjusted. God can help us to make these changes. I pray to Jehovah for self-control and that I become less impulsive. Each time I pray to Jehovah, I ask Him to help me and I feel things are getting better. If you feel insecure and you want people to like you, one thing to be careful of is not to become too overbearing or neurotic or nervous and, and try to really force it. The best way to make yourself likable is to be yourself. Don't try to be someone that you're not, because if you try to put on this front or a different person, people are going to see through that. Another way to improve our personality is to learn to communicate. Ecclesiastes 3.7 says, There's a time to keep quiet and a time to speak. I've been told I talk a lot. <laughs> So now I'm going to be quiet for the rest of the day. <laughs> There's a time for everything. Right. There's a time for everything. And that's, that's something I had to learn. I think knowing how to listen is one of the most important things, right? Because in a friendship, there's communication and there's dialogue. It shows you're interested in others when you don't interrupt the person who's talking. A true friend knows how to listen to other people's problems. When your friend starts telling you his feelings, but you ignore him and go on to something else that you want to talk about, well, that wouldn't be very nice. And he's going to say, what kind of friend is that? Working on our personality can help us to win friends. Even so, we can hit another roadblock when friendships seem to become too close. I tended to be very jealous with my friends. I wanted them all for myself. So when they were friendly with other people, I would get offended and I wouldn't speak to them for a while. I like to have a, f a friend, but I also like to have my space because I've had that experience when they get so close to you that they just don't want to let go. At 2 Corinthians 6.13, the Bible tells us to widen out. Don't let your one friend be your answer to happiness. If they're just relying on you, then they have the problem of not widening out, and they're missing out on so much more of what's in the congregation than just you. Widening out opens up opportunities for friendship that you may have overlooked. A whole bunch of the guys would always be together. And then we noticed this other guy always being alone. At the beginning, we used to think he was like, ah, this guy's not worth it, he's not good. So our surprise, the guy was really nice. He was really, he was really, really funny. There's never been a lot of young people in our congregation, but we looked around to see who we could get along with, even if we weren't the same age. We also looked in other congregations. Now we have a nice group. Yes, widen out. Get to know the brothers and sisters in your congregation. Learn to enjoy a variety of people, people of different ages and backgrounds. So, take an interest in others, work on personality flaws, widen out. When you follow Bible principles, you'll find that others enjoy being around you, and making friends becomes easier. There is one friendship, however, that is more important than any other.
Well, when I was younger, I didn't really think of Jehovah that much as a person. Well, I definitely think that having a friendship with God is a hard concept to understand. I like the scripture that says, taste and see that Jehovah is good, because if you want to get to know Jehovah as a friend and develop a relationship with him, you do have to put forth effort and you have to take the first step, you could say. That you have to see Jehovah as a person and that he's real, and that when you pray, you know that he's hearing you. When I'm all alone, I take advantage of the opportunity to talk to him. I talk to him all the time. There is no greater feeling than having Jehovah as your friend, and it's worth the effort. Friends in your life come and go, but the only person who will never truly leave you is Jehovah. He can be your friend forever if you want him to be. Our family went through some hard times having a single mom. We didn't know where our next meal was coming from. We would be able to pay the rent. And that's the, I think the biggest thing I've learned in my life is to throw that anxiety upon Jehovah. And he'll take care of you. And every single time, without fail, that he's come through for us. My parents weren't in the truth. The only thing I had was Jehovah. So I had developed a real relationship with him. When I think of a friend, I think of somebody you desire to tell your feelings to. But you can always tell Jehovah anything. Through the good times and the bad, one way or another, I've seen that he's always helped me to continue. Whenever I have a problem, whenever I'm down, I always know that I can go to him any time that I want to for anything. I think you kind of go from uh, where it's just uh, saying his name into the microphone as a one-word <laughs> answer yeah. to a point where he's real to you, and he's there, and he's in your everyday life, and you want him there more than anything because he's your friend and you know that he's the best friend that you could ever have. When you make Jehovah your best friend, you'll be drawn to others who do likewise. In the Christian congregation, you can enjoy friendships with people of different ages and backgrounds. Friendships that can influence you in a positive way. What helped me more than anything else was the help from the other young people in the congregation. They always tried to include me, not only in recreation, but also in spiritual activities. I think that having friends that are older than ourselves is a good thing because we can talk to them about our problems. Then, as friends, they'll help us. Older brothers and sisters that are your friends, I mean, I've experienced it. They're, they're the best listeners. I, I like to play ball. I, at first, I didn't want to hang out with them because I look at them, they're all quiet or they, you know, they're too old. They can't play. So uh, one day we're like, all right, let's go after the meeting and play basketball. I was surprised these guys could play. We beat you. We <laughs> beat you. We beat you in basketball. Baby. My main adult friends are my parents. I think they're the ones who can give you the best advice, since they love you more than anyone else. I talk to my mom and dad, and they listen. And I know, I know that sounds very storybookish, like it's out of some story fairy tale, but it's, it's what happened to me. Whether they're young or old, the best kind of friends are people who are friends of God. Look, Sister Smith, and your brochure. Oh, perfect timing. Among true Christians, you can find friends who will not hurt you, but who will help you. You can have friends who won't tear you down, but who will build you up. You can have friends you can trust, who are loyal. If you are a friend of God, you will never be without real friends. Not everyone is satisfied with wholesome Christian association.
Some are envious of young people who seem to be more exciting, who seem to be having a good time. When you're young, you need to feel accepted and to belong to a group. You jump through all kinds of hoops, you do all of these kind of things with your attire, with the way you wear your hair, with the way you talk, with the way you stand, to try to fit in. Everybody bought the same pair of sneakers, and it was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you didn't have these sneakers, it's like you weren't cool. That desire to fit in can be harmful if it draws you to the wrong crowd. <laughs> The Bible warns, bad associations spoil useful habits. Bad association would be anybody who doesn't love Jehovah. It's the person who shows by his attitude and his way of doing things that he doesn't follow Jehovah's principles. The Bible's warning against bad association can even apply within the congregation. Some young people in the congregation, like, they'll act one way in the meetings, but as soon as they go out, you know, they start acting a different way. And then you're like, who is, who is this? This isn't the same person that I was in the meeting yesterday. Because you can see that there are many young people that are like real rebellious, and you can see right away that they're not good associations. I think you can tell a lot about a person by what he talks about. Does he just talk about having fun? Or does he talk about spiritual things? You may recognize that certain youth are bad association. Still, it may be hard not to envy them. When you're around these worldly kids and they're all dating and doing the sports thing and you want to be in with what they're doing. There's times when you want to do stuff and then your parents are like, well, they're not good association and stuff, so you wonder, well, if I can't hang out with them, who am I going to hang out with? Living by godly standards will limit your choice of friends. It will also make you stand out as different. There's a lot of pressure on you as a witness. They think you're weird, that you belong to a sect or something strange. The kids hate me. They would spit on me. They hit me on the back in class, so I couldn't listen. Every time I went to school, my heart would be pounding. Faced with such pressures, it may be tempting to hide your Christian beliefs. When I ran into classmates while out in service, they would see that I was dressed up, and they'd ask me what I was doing. But I was afraid to tell them that I was preaching. The desire to be liked, to fit in, to be like everybody else is powerful. So powerful that some even secretly crave association with the wrong crowd. Two young Christians recall how bad associations nearly led to their spiritual ruin. I got involved in bad association basically at school. I sought out people who were those things like exciting and um, cool and fun and witnesses that were leading double lives. Some of them sold drugs, anything from marijuana to crack cocaine. It pretty much started off with drinking. You know, selling drugs was the end thing to do. The guys were going around with beepers. <clears throat> they had money. For some reason, I felt that I could sell but not use. We'd go go to some parking lot somewhere and pull out the, the booze. Basically, it was all done at school. My mother was out service. My dad was working, so they didn't know what I was doing. Oh, definitely, it affects you spiritually. Um, you constantly are feeling guilty, of course. I really didn't have any love for Jehovah in my heart. If it was there, I, I couldn't feel it. I knew what the Bible said. As far as any of the other children in the congregation, I could give you the same answers they did. 
So it wasn't the head knowledge that, but it just wasn't in my heart. There's only so much you can do for so long, and you're eventually going to get caught. And my mom, she pleaded with me, basically, to, to give Jehovah one more chance. It all came out, so we had lots of elders meetings. So I really made an effort to, you know, get, um, try to have a relationship myself with Jehovah. Oh, telling my parents was harder than anything, because when you're involved in wrongdoing, you think, this is me I'm hurting. I know I'm hurting myself, but I decide to hurt myself, and it doesn't affect anybody else. And then to speak to them and let them know how you've let them down, I've never seen them be so wounded. I changed my association. I started hanging around with you know, some of the witness kids in the, in the area, and they helped me out a lot. My relatives and my friends and the good examples in the congregation, they helped me to see that you absolutely have to change your association if you want to do good. And what I regret most is that I wasted all these years being selfish when I could have been serving Jehovah. My parents. They really had a lot of love for me, but I don't know, in, in return, I just gave them basically nothing but heartache. And I thought I knew what I could handle and what I couldn't. But Jehovah knows what's going to hurt you and what's not. And so if you just trust in that, you'll have a successful youth without all that pain. Life is just so much better for me, the blessings that you get, Jehovah gives you. And by just serving him, it's, it's, it's incomparable to what the world has to offer. Back in Bible times, a young woman named Dinah got involved with bad associations. What were the consequences? Cast members of a modern day drama recall the Bible account. Dinah was the daughter of Jacob. She moved along with Jacob's family to a new area. The scriptures say that she used to go out to visit the daughters of the land. It was a, a custom with her. She was putting herself in a compromising situation. At some point, a Canaanite man named Shechem noticed her. He was the most honorable man in his father's house, but he was still not a worshiper of Jehovah. He was handsome. He, he had his pick of women. But there was something about Dinah that must have attracted him. It uh, had a lot to do with her, uh, her innocence and her inexperience. She was a virgin. She was not like all these other Canaanite girls. She put herself in a compromising situation. She allowed herself to be alone with Shechem, where he took advantage of the situation. Um, they might have just started talking or, you know, laughing about something, and one thing leads to another. I'm sure it would have been devastating because he forced her to have sex. She got herself into the situation, and that She'd hurt not only her family, her father, her parents, but Jehovah too. Even though the Dinah account is from history, that it, it still definitely applies today. This kind of situation can definitely happen. I think this drama is going to help a lot of people, kids and adults, to see that what happened to Dinah could happen to any of us if we let it. Dear Chrissy, sorry it's taken me so long to answer your letters. It was pretty crazy around here for a while. Anyway, I want you to know that I'm okay. 
But Chrissy, something you said in your last letter worried me. You said that you thought the friends at the Kingdom Hall were boring, and that the kids at school were a lot more fun. If you knew what I've been through recently, you'd understand why I'm worried. You've probably wondered why I haven't written you since we moved here. I guess I've been too ashamed. But now I think I need to tell you. I understood why we had to move, with Dad getting the new job and everything. But that didn't make things any easier. I was leaving behind all my friends. Mom and Dad were so busy with our new home and their new jobs. I didn't want to burden them with how miserable I felt. I started writing poetry again. It seemed to take my mind off my loneliness. At the new congregation, Mom and Dad were eager to make new friends. This is my wife, Julie. I had a major attitude problem. Well, um, there was nice meeting you, Tara. Yeah, same here. I wonder what was wrong with her. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, you must be Tara. Hi. Hi. I just met your parents. They are so nice. Thanks. Well, anyway, my name is Stacy. Do you mind if I sit up? There was this pioneer sister, Stacy Evans. She tried really hard to be nice. So, I hear you're from Lewinda Falls? Lucinda Falls. Oh, Lucinda Falls, sorry. Pretty small town, huh? It's not that small. Oh, sorry. I That's didn't okay. mean to. Must be pretty hard being away from all your friends, huh? Now, excuse me, brothers. Could everyone please find their seats? Stacy, it was nice meeting you. I just wasn't ready to make any new friends. Chrissy, I had never, ever felt so alone. And school was the final brushstroke on this portrait of misery. I felt so out of place. It was like I didn't even exist. A few weeks later, though, Things seemed to change for the better. It was in Mr. Beckwith's English class. That was so five years ago. All right, listen up. Don't look happy. Listen up, people. Okay, now the question is what are we going to do? Thank you. This past weekend, while you were out partying, <coughs> this overworked and underpaid English teacher spent his weekend reading your poems. Aww. That's sweet. What about your <laughs> Take this masterpiece, for example. I think I shall never see a guy as cool as <laughs> Anthony. He's, He's very girl? strong and cute and tall. I'd like to show him off in the shopping mall. Oh, <laughs> hey, Aaron, you got some loose up there? Turn around. <laughs> and, and guess who authored this work of art? My skateboard makes a sound Seriously? when it really hits no the ground. That can be by people. No, no, Mr. B, you got to read it with a little rhythm, a little style, oh, some attitude. Oh, Sit, Kyle, sit. Or I could just sit. Like this. Oh, <laughs> some of you did write verses that rightly can be called lyrical poetry. Right. Now we'll have that select few present their poems before the class. In your dream. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Miss Taylor. Uh, not this time. <laughs> First up, Miss Tara Matson. Great. As if being the new kid in class wasn't bad enough. Now I had to be put on public exhibition. Who's Matt? 
I have her in my seventh period, though. Does she, she always look like that? Yeah. Farm <laughs> girl. I was sick. I remember the day I she caught loneliness. <laughs> okay, come on. <laughs> I remember the day I caught loneliness. It was the day we moved away. It lay like a stone in my lap, and no matter how I tried, prying, tearing, it simply would not go away. I never knew emptiness until I moved away. I remained a pebble, lost in this world so vast and uncaring. Cast aside, passed by, left astray. I took steps to destroy it before it sapped me, crushed me, left me victim. I pulled harder, ripping that stone right from my heart, and threw it all back into the void from where it came. Yes, I had thrown loneliness away. Thank you, Miss Madsen. Excellent work. Notice her use of simile when she says, it laid like a stone For weeks I had been lap. invisible to these kids. That contributes to the Suddenly they noticed me. Thank you. Do you know what this shows me? That you're all capable of writing poetry. It's just a matter of making the effort. Don't forget, people, New Friday, dramatic dialogue, theme, suffering loss, partner optional. So, you're a math genius, too. Oh, hi, Lori. And some kind of frustrated poet just waiting to be discovered. I wouldn't say that. Well, Mr. Beckwith sure drooled over your poetry. So? So, I figure you're the one to help me with the class assignment. You mean the dramatic dialogue? Yeah, theme, suffering loss. <clears throat> anyway, I have to get an A on it. Why, you're flunking English? No, but I gotta pull my grades up in order to get into college. So I figure you're the one to help me with this. I was planning on working on it by myself. <laughs> Come on, Tara, Mr. B said we could use a partner. Look, Lori, I'm sorry, but I like to work alone when I write. Please, don't make me beg. I actually felt sorry for her. <sighs> Is that a yes? I guess. Yes. Okay, I'll pick you up tomorrow and you can go to my place. Your place? Why can't we just do it here? This place is gross. Besides, we'll have a lot more privacy. Okay, ciao. Going to her house wasn't exactly what I had in mind. But at the time, I couldn't think of any way to get out of it. And I have to admit, I was a little curious about this girl. We both had a serious case of writer's block. Beckwith drives me crazy with these assignments. I mean, what does suffering loss mean? Didn't he say it could mean whatever we want it to mean? So we make something up. Like what? Like when your parents make you move away and you lose everything you care about. <laughs> Tell me about it. What? You too? Hey, I wasn't always the picture of charm and fashion that you see before you today. We used to live in a small house in a small town. And then Dad hit it big in the stock market. And voila, goodbye friends, hello loneliness. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. That's it. That's what? The loss. We do a dramatic dialogue about the loss of friendship. You mean about friends moving away? No, a little too close to home. Then how about because they've had a fight? A fight about what? <laughs> hello about guys. What else do girls fight about? Finally, the ideas were flowing. We got together again the next day. So there's two women, and we can make them really old, like 30. <laughs> yeah, and they're both hopelessly in love with this guy, Jake. Jake, nah, Brett. <laughs> okay, Brett. As I got to know Lori, my opinion of her began to change. I never would have guessed that we had so much in common. These are great pictures. 
Who's this? Oh, that was my best friend, Misty. We used to do everything together. Anyway, that's our old house. Can you believe it? <laughs> Don't you miss it sometimes? Mm, yeah, a little. But mostly my friends. So, Proverbs 13, 20 says, He that is walking with wise persons will become wise, but he that is having dealings with the stupid ones will fare badly. Now, when the Bible says stupid ones, it's not talking about people who are unintelligent, but about people who do not follow godly men. All I could think about was getting together again with Lori. You can't have him, Alexandra. Brett is mine. Curse it. Let's take it from the top. You can't have him, Alexandra. Brett is mine. Yours? <laughs> well, you don't own Brett, Kimberly. Oh, yeah. What about me, Alexandra? <laughs> That's the problem, Kimberly. It's always been about you. Ooh. <laughs> Doesn't our friendship mean anything at all to you? Uh-oh, here it comes. Our friendship? Write it off as a loss, honey. Your loss, my gain. Oh. Okay, so we weren't ready for Broadway. But the class loved it. A week ago, I couldn't stand this girl. Suddenly, Lori's friends didn't mind being seen with me. That was so great. You guys should try out for the school play. Okay, no, that was just for an A. <laughs> but you have definitely earned a seat at this table, Tara. Yeah, we had an opening for a literary genius. Erin, please, I'm no genius. Ooh, and so modest. <laughs> Girl, if I had your talent, I'd cash in on it. What do you mean? Hello, scholarships, a career, fame, money, guys, and money, and guys. No, writing's just a hobby for me. So what do you plan to do, flip burgers? Well, I need to do something to support myself, but I really want to help people. What, you mean like a social worker or something? No, more like volunteer work. Volunteer work? Yeah, I mean, we teach people. Teach what? Hello, teachers don't make any money. No, let me explain. You see, we're, well, I mean, I'm one of... Hold that thought. Yeah? Hey, Joanna. Oh, cool. Of course I'll be there. All right, ciao. Summer clearance girls, today only. Yes. Tara, yes. you can't miss it. I don't think I can. I don't have any money with me. Have no fear, Daddy's credit card is here. Besides, I owe you big time. Hey, maybe we can get her out of her Miss Lucinda Falls outfit. Miss Lucinda Falls. Whatever. And besides, what's wrong with my outfit? <laughs> <laughs> now I was in Lori's circle of friends, but I had to make a few changes to fit in. Oh, that's such a oh, I So Mark sees you. Mark. Hello, Mark in your English class, Mark. He's been checking you out ever since your little poetry reading. He's cute, and Daddy has big bucks. Mm -hmm. Not to mention that he's recently become available. I could definitely see you two together. Together? I don't want to be together with anyone. We could set you up. Well, if he's so great, how come none of you are interested in him? I'm seeing somebody already. Ditto. And I'm with Anthony, remember? And he's in college, thank you. Besides, I'm not into the sensitive intellectual type. <laughs> yeah, just that, like that last mutant you were dating. The intellectually charged type. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even get me started on some of the losers you dated. Anyway, you are interested, aren't you, Tara? Well, no. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> Don't worry, Tara. We'll arrange everything. <laughs> arrange what? <laughs> arrange what? The girls also figured I needed a little help with my social life. Mark, she's way different from the other girls you've dated. I mean, she's into charity and volunteering and that sort of stuff. She wants to be a social worker or something like that. <laughs> oh, hi, Tara. Mark, you are so funny. Hi, Tara. Hey, Tara, we saved a seat just for you. Thanks. You know Mark Chandler, don't you? Yeah, we're in the same English class. And you are the great poet and playwright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. No, I'm serious. You were really great. <laughs> so, 
how do you like life near the big city? Well, I haven't actually seen the city yet. Get out. What do you do when you're not at school? Oh. Oh. Oops. That's so bad of me. Yeah. On meatloaf day, get the pizza. Yeah, that's good. Here you go. Isn't he so sweet? Anyway, on weekends, I'm usually with my parents. And hey, what are you doing Saturday? We could show her around. Yeah. Yeah. Play tour guides, why yeah. not? Sounds like fun. Mm -hmm. Count me in. So what do you say? <laughs> I don't know. I have to be up early on Sunday. We'll start early. We'll get back early. There you go. Come on, Tara. Come on. Well, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Hello, right. So we'll meet after lunch, yeah. and I'll pick you up at your house. Great. That's OK. I'll just get a ride to Lori's. I never would have admitted it, but I did okay, think cool. Mark was cute. And a day with the girl sounded like fun. And then I said, well, I'll do the that Saturday morning, I went out in field service with Stacy Evans, but my mind was not on preaching. You want to do the next one? No, that's okay. You could do it. I told Stacy that I was hungry and wanted to stop service early. She insisted on buying me lunch. Okay, here's your salad. Thanks. It'll be a couple minutes on your burger, honey. Thanks. <laughs> so, how are you doing? I mean, getting used to the new school and everything. Okay, actually. Most everyone's been pretty nice. Oh, that's good. Hey, listen. I'm having some friends over tonight. I want you to come. I actually made a cheesecake that I'm proud of. I'd love to, but I promised to go into the city with some friends. Oh, from our hall? No from school, but they're just going to show me around the city. They're real nice. Look, I hope you don't mind me asking this, but how well do you really know these kids? What do you mean? I mean, do they have any interest in the Bible? I don't know. It hasn't come up, but they're not into drugs or anything like that. Hmm. In fact, they're even nicer than some of the kids at the Kingdom Hall. Well. Even if that were true, don't you think you have to be careful with people? People who may not even believe in the Bible? Don't forget what happened to Dinah. Dinah? Yeah, you remember Jacob's daughter? <laughs> These kids are not Canaanites. They're very nice. Maybe, but what are their beliefs? What are their morals? I'm not saying that at all. I mean, the Bible tells us to love our neighbors. But doesn't it also warn us that it's dangerous to get too close to certain people? People that don't follow God's standards? Dinah learned that the hard way. But don't we have to teach people about the Bible? How can I do that if I don't spend any time with them? Oh, so you have had a chance to witness to them? Well, no, but that's not the point. Lori and her friends are not bad. Okay, but do they encourage you to do good things? Like? Like personal study, meetings, field service. No. Look, Stacy, I've already given my word, and Jesus did say I have to let my yes mean yes, right? Tara, do you really think Jesus meant saying yes to things that could hurt you? Stacy, I'll be careful. I'm not going to do anything stupid. Trust me. Here's your burger, honey. <laughs> Stacy's words affected me far more than she realized. But I had already made up my mind. I lied to my parents, 
and told them I had plans with some friends from the congregation. stayed together as a group. But soon, Mark and I were talking. I really enjoyed the attention. Oh, I love his stuff. But you know he was stoned when he wrote those poems. <laughs> you write better when you're high? No, I'm not into drugs. Are you? You know that used to be the tallest building in New York? Mark made me feel special. And the more I got to know him, the more I liked him. I wasn't going to let anything spoil this day. It's never stopped you before. <laughs> Why are we going home so early? Aaron's right. This place doesn't even get going until after dark. That's true, and if we leave now, all we're going to do is sit in traffic. Why don't we hit a couple of clubs? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great, but... Come on, Tara, just call your parents tell them we had a flat tire or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. Come on. No, I better get home. Oh. Oh. I want to go I home know. now. People, have no fear. Thanks to me, your evening will not be a total waste. Oh, so you're leaving? <laughs> <laughs> now you know I don't touch that stuff. It stunts your growth. You lost. <laughs> Kyle, put it away before we get busted. Oh, I hope that's the good stuff. The best. <laughs> hey, my parents are gone. Little party at my place. Yeah. Too bad, Tara, you're missing out. Tara, are you okay? Yeah, it's just that... Never mind. Well, we better get Tara back home before she misses her bedtime. Yeah. To be honest, Chrissy, I probably would have stayed. But it was getting dark, and I knew I'd never get away with coming home that late. Hey, don't forget about that party. Don't worry, guys. Be there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you later. Bye. Bye, Mark. Mark told me he didn't mind taking me home. Oh, Mark, you want to make your next left? Wait, Tara, there's one more place you got to see. Mark, I've got to get home. <laughs> I'll get you home. Trust me. Mark. This is your favorite spot? Sure is. What, may I ask, is so special about it? Sometimes I just like to come here and think. About what? Things. Like, how to tell your father you don't want to go to law school and work for the firm. <laughs> Isn't there good money in it? Uh, I don't care about the money. I want to help people. Maybe teach or do volunteer work. You sound like me. Really? Well, yeah. Mark seemed to care about a lot of the things that were important to me. Before I knew it, we had been talking for over an hour. 
So Kyle's flying down the hallway. Beck was just right in front of him. Boom! Kyle and Beck was flat on their backs. Oh no! Kyle spent his entire sophomore year in detention for that one. <laughs> Tara? You know what? Oh, never mind. No, what? You're different from the other girls, aren't you? Different? Is that supposed to be a compliment? Yeah. I mean, I've never met anyone like you. I could tell from your poem. Well, you know, I was really impressed with your poem, too. Oh, well, thanks. But yours told me something. Told you what? That you've got a lot going on inside. I mean, Lori and the other girls are okay, but they're all so empty. You're different. Chrissy, I can't believe how close I came to breaking Jehovah's Laws that night. Things went way too far. And Mark wanted to go much farther. But I couldn't. I kept thinking about how much it would hurt my parents. My friends. And especially Jehovah. Still, it wasn't easy. It took everything I had to stop and to get Mark to take me home. Tara? Mark revealed a side of himself that I hadn't seen before. I just don't get it. Things were going so great. What is it with you? Mark didn't care about me or my feelings. He wanted one thing. Later on, I learned I wasn't the first or the last to be taken to his favorite spot. I gotta go. I felt so stupid, so naive. It was wrong to be alone like that with any guy, but especially one who didn't serve Jehovah. I let Mark know that I would never go out with him again. That night, I told my parents everything. They were very upset. Are you sure you told us everything? Nothing else happened? No, Dad, I told you. You've been telling us a lot of things. I don't know what to believe anymore. Honey, what were you thinking? Didn't you get it? Why do you think he took you there? Don't you know what he wanted? I can't believe this. After a while, things started to calm down, and they really listened. Tara, it took a lot of courage to tell us all that. Sorry I got so angry. That's okay, Dad. I just wish I came to you and Mom sooner. Maybe this wouldn't have happened. Honey, we're just glad things didn't go any further than they did. I know, but... I still feel awful about what did happen. And so do we. We got so wrapped up in our new jobs, the house, that we didn't even see what you were going through. Honey, we're going to do everything that we can to help you get through this. It's been a long day. Let's get some rest, and we can talk about this tomorrow. so much. My parents, and later the elders, were really there for me. The heart is more treacherous than anything else. I had heard that scripture a thousand times before, but never gave it much thought. Now I couldn't stop thinking about it. 
I wanted to be liked and accepted so much that I was willing to hide who I really was. I had to start setting things straight. It was so perfect. I mean, what was the problem? I know Mark practices safe sex. Lori couldn't believe that I turned Mark down. It's because... Because of what? Because of what I believe. I don't get it. I mean, it's my religious beliefs, Lori. Look, Tara, I went through a lot of trouble to get you guys together. And now you've suddenly gotten religious? What's up with that? I haven't suddenly gotten religious. This is what I've always believed. I guess I just forgot who I really am and what I care about. Don't you care about Mark? I did, but I shouldn't have gotten involved with him. And I'm definitely not going to do something immoral with him. Who said do something immoral? <laughs> I have morals. I'm not saying that you don't. Then what are you saying? That I don't believe in having sex before marriage. If it's just somebody that you really care about, what's the big deal? The big deal is that the Bible says it's wrong. Do you have to do every little thing the Bible says? Look, Lori, I should have told you this before. I'm one of Jehovah's Witnesses. You are? Yes, and we take the Bible seriously. It says sex is for two people who are married. <laughs> You're kidding, right? No, I'm not. Okay, so it didn't work out with you and Mark. But don't forget about the party Friday. Maybe you'll meet somebody else. Somebody who's more like you. No, Lori. I don't think so. Not there. Well, then just come and hang out with us girls. Thanks, but I just wouldn't be comfortable at the party. Okay, so you don't want to date guys and you don't want to go to parties. Don't you people have any kind of fun? Of course we do. The Bible doesn't condemn fun. I would love to explain my beliefs. Maybe then all this would make more sense to you. I don't know, Tara, it's late. Maybe another time. Telling her all that was not easy, but it was worth it. I think that Lori respected me for it, and it felt good to finally stand up for what I believed. I just wish that I had spoken up earlier. It would have saved me a lot of pain. Are you sure? Do you want to talk about it? Stacy, ever since I've moved here, you've been trying to be my friend. And I've acted so stupid. Why do you keep trying? Because I don't think you really like this. I think I'm looking at someone who's going through a hard time. And who really needs a friend. And I'd like to be that friend, if you let me. You have been a friend, Stacy. Maybe even more than you know. I'll be okay. 
I realize now how much Jehovah cares and that I have my parents and friends like you to help me. You know what? Tomorrow, you and me. Let's go out in service and do lunch or something. Does that sound good? I'd like that. Good. As long as we don't go back to the Silver Spoon <laughs> Diner again. <laughs> You mean the greasy spoon diner. Oh. <laughs> Chrissy, that was months ago, and I'm finally getting over things and feeling much better. I see things a lot differently now. I realize that being in the truth means more than just going to the Kingdom Hall with our parents. That we really do have to make the truth our own. Being with people who want to do the same thing can make a big difference. Perfect timing. I just finished a letter to an old friend. Oh, really? From back home? Yeah. Excellent. Hi, Meg. Hi, Lynette. Hi. Thank you. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> So how was service be this morning? At first, I didn't think I had anything in common with the friends in my congregation. But you know what? We have the most important thing in common we can have. Our friendship with Jehovah. Things are going great with my parents. I'm a lot more open with them now. Why don't you just go ahead with the girls and we'll just meet you over there, okay? Okay. And I let them know how I really feel. We've gotten a lot closer. Hey, Ter, does this mean your dad's going to try and be a sports hero again? <laughs> He's trying like the last time. Isn't he attractive for like a month? <laughs> hey, I heard that. Just kidding, Brother Madsen. Sometimes I used to think I was missing out because I couldn't do everything the kids in school did. Now I think that they're the ones missing out. Maybe there are a lot of things a Christian can't do. But there's a lot of things we can do. The friends in our congregation get together all the time. I can't wait for you to meet them when you come out and visit. I hope that's soon. I wish I could go back and do things differently, but I can't change the past. I can only move forward and try to learn from my mistakes. You see, I've learned something very important, something that I will never forget who my real friends are. And Chrissy, I hope that you will always be one of them. Forever. Love, Tara. We don't want to stick ourselves in a corner and and just hide and refuse to talk to anyone because that's that's not balanced. There's nothing wrong with talking to the kids at school. We can be friendly with them because we're obviously going to have some of the same interests. But there's a certain line that we just won't cross. Kids that witness kids, they need to be honest with the kids at school. They need to let them know right away. You bring it up. You tell them what your beliefs are, you know, that you're Jehovah's Witness. They're proud of what they are. Kids today need to recognize that there are good associates within the Christian congregation. They can have a great time and yet still live up to Bible standards and Bible principles. 